Welcome back to Weekend Walkabout. This is Janet McConvich. I'm here with Stephen Nicola from GardenAtoZ.org. I'm glad to have you here. This is the, the uh, chapter three of Planted Well, Even When the Roots Are Wrong. Chapter three has to do with the consequences of a poor root system. We're very glad to share it with you. If you'd like to know more about who we are and why we can talk to you about it, please look at the Planted Well introductor, introduction section. Keep in mind that this is copyrighted material. It represents decades of our, of our work, of our own pictures, of our own experience, and we, we want to share it with you and with your friends. But if you use it for a larger group, please contact us first before you do. Thank you. You may have downloaded or you can download this handout, this material, which is the outline that will follow today. It keeps us on track to have this, and we'll show you as we go along where we are on it. To download this material, Go to our website, gardenatoc.org, and in the search field, put in webinar audience. On that page, you can scroll down to this handout or any of the other ones from our webinars and download them. So now we're into chapter three, what happens when you have these roots like this. So there are distress signals that your plants are giving you. Almost all trees and shrubs planted in the last 40 years, almost all, have compromised root systems. So what you want to do is be able to see the distress signals in time that you can do something about them. So we're going to show you what we see and see if you can read them. There's a whole list. We're going to go through them one at a time. Yep. The whole plant is unstable. They Unst fall over. Look at these guys. I don't care can if they you? live 20 years. They're not a successful planting if they didn't grow roots out of that ball. Look at that. They're There's, still in the You can the still ball. see the ball. Of course they're going to fall over. Somebody said, oh man, the car must have pushed that over. No, no, it was 10 years in the ground and it finally got heavy enough on top to just roll right out of the ground. It had grown no roots up. It happens in botanical gardens. This is at this is another symptom. University of Wisconsin. This oh, sorry. Not, this is not rolling out of the ground. No, this is another symptom. This is the thin crown and a, and, Every year and less a top growth. back. Very thin crown. And you look in close. You can see the girdling roots, and they've tried to cut some of them. Stephen talked to the horticulturalist here at this arboretum. He said, so my favorite beach out there. And he said, well, we want to be careful and do a little at a time. We're not careful. That is killing the trunk of the tree. It's killing the tree. It may be too late for this tree anyway, but take it out. It's not helping anything to leave that root there. And in fact, if, you, if you do cut a girdling root out, you don't leave the curve. You cut back to where, if it grows, it can grow out radially because this one will continue growing in the same direction it's aiming. So you would cut it back to where it's going straight, if, if possible. Yeah. Flat on one side. If your trunk doesn't have a buttress on one side, it's see, got a girdle. So it's got a trouble. See the flat? flat. If there's no flare, if, there's, if it's flat on all sides, it goes in like a stovepipe, that's trouble. Every have. tree. That's beautiful. That's, That's what trees wonderful. should have. If the leader slows down in growth and the side branches start dominating, and by that I mean here's a paper bark maple. I walked There's into the, the yard. The leader should be should there. be up there. I walked into the yard having been asked to come and give some tips for the garden going on a tour, I walked in and went, we have to dig up that tree, which is a terrible thing to do, but the, the crown of that paper bark maple should be a round crown. It's the way that it is now because the leader has died back repeatedly. And when the leader dies back, it means there's trouble at the roots. And it can happen much further down the way. Um, things that were planted 20 and 30 years ago, this is a bald cypress, are just running into their roots. And how do we know that? How do you know that? Look at what the tree should grow like. Here's a, a wonderful book on native trees and shrubs showing you with a, a line drawing from a picture, the habit where the branches should be going horizontally and the plant should be pyramidal. Compare that to the, compare that to the right real tree. See that the top has slowed down and that the side branches are not horizontal but are trending up. That means the tree has run into trouble at the root. This is a younger one, this is a Dawn Redwood. And because it's got a background that's got lots of green in it, here it is cut out so you can see it. The tip is growing very weakly and all the growth that there is on it is coming from the bottom. It's becoming a Dawn Redwood bush rather than a tree. 
and it should look like that. Dawn redwoods are the most beautiful. They are wonderful. Pyramidal trees and fast growing, but this one has definitely got trouble. There's the leader, and there's the side branches going up. You can see it more in the wintertime. Now we, we reduced the, the height of the bed so we can see the flare now. We dug down around it and took roots out. Thanks to one person who's in the audience right now who has wonderful fingers and could feel in the dark to feel the roots. And it is growing better now. Mm -hmm. The leader did not die back after a year of doing that. So now I've gone in and on the right, I cut back the branches that were growing up. And we're going to watch and see if the tree starts taking off now as it should grow. As it should, yes. And this is more of the leader slowing down. Can you see the flat top on that Katsura? Katsura at that age should still be pyramidal. Yeah. And that Kusa with the no flare. Can you see the, the indent? Or dead in the middle. The leader the just, boom, gone. That one's probably too far. When they start dying in the middle, you probably can't do anything to help them anymore. We were so concerned, 20 years in the ground, this tricolor beach growing so well, and then I looked and went, oh no, it's run into a root. 20 years in the ground, swamp white oak, can you see the yellowing and the flatness at the top? Look at the bottom when you see that. Hemlock that's weak and thin and doesn't seem to be growing very well. Look up, do you see the leader in the center top? It's not growing as much as the side branches are? That's trouble, get down to the bottom of that tree. And that's what this tree is telling you. I'm in trouble. And these trees, they were planted at the exact same time. And I, we know that because we saw them for 30 years, we watched right. these trees. And none of them are as big as a 30 year tree should be. These are all Norway maples. But can you tell that the one on the left is not growing like it could grow? And that is why. Nobody gave me permission to do this. This is in a park near our old house. I just did it. And you can also still see that the cage is still there. This tree's a goner. Maybe not yet. It Maybe still is there time. last time I was there. If you know a viburnum, this is a Berkwood viburnum, should be 10 feet tall. And it's only four feet tall after 10 years. <clears throat> Get it out. Look at the roots. When I took it out of the ground, it hadn't even grown out of the root ball except one root had escaped. It was just one big circle of roots. If it's not growing to potential, I took all that off. So I took it off, put it back in. It's really catching up now. This ginkgo, it sat. This was, this was 10 years in the ground. 10 years doing nothing. And growth I, rate was terrible. Little teeny tiny leaves and I said, we're going to dig it up. Matt, would you pop that tree up? Okay, get that tree out of the ground. It hadn't developed it was, any root outside. It, it was only about a few inches deep, but ginkgos are very sensitive to being deep in the ground. And we cut off all of those girdle circling so roots at the bottom. Put it back in the ground at the height that it should be. And there it is about uh, four years later. Now, you can't see it well because of the background, so I've outlined in white where it is. It's about four years later. And here's... This year, earlier, well, last year, at the end of last year, look at that baby. That baby has tripled in size. And don't think it's going to stay crooked and bent like that. Eventually, it's, it's it will it, straighten it's it up. Itself up. Well, no, it won't, because a buck came oh, and rubbed the living right. daylights out of it this, this it winter. It just got to three times its size, and now a deer took it out. In the word... This person planted. This is the symptom. The symptom is, is dying. Is dying, despite Death. giving it good care. Everything they did was right. They followed all the directions, watered, planted well. And yeah, watering. Planted a soaker hose there with put them. Put a soaker hose, kept it running, and they still failed. You can't find the trunk. The tree, the, those branches are in the ground. The branches are coming out of the ground at the base of the tree. Arborvitaes in particular, because they're so chubby and thick and people want to take them home in that nice three or five gallon pot, they are all put down to the bottom of the pot so that they stand up. They're all planted too deep and they're all going to fail and you probably have seen hedges that look like this. These were 10 years in the ground. And we took that and out. He, and here's what happens. What happens is the buried bark begins to rot. You can yes. see the adventitious roots at the top layer here. And down below, there's a flare root. 
The adventitious roots can't serve that tree as it gets bigger, and meanwhile, the bark is rotting and killing the plant. Nothing you can do about that. Those are those adventitious roots, just like on the willow that we showed you. Now, these arborvitaes were all planted too deep. I saw them at a, a client showed me she was starting a new hedge with arborvitae she'd been picking up on sale here and there, all different sizes. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, Cheryl. We have to dig them all up. And on a 38 degree rainy day in March last year, we dug up 32 arborvitaes and took all the soil off and reset them higher. Some of them we had to prop up because they were so heavy on the top. We only lost one arborvitae. They are growing now. If you see a plant with chlorotic foliage, the, where the veins are dark and, and the rest of the leaf is pale, that's, that's a problem. People say it's a nutrient deficiency. Yes, but it can be a nutrient deficiency because there aren't enough roots spread out far enough to get nutrients for the plant. So we're more often, than, more often telling people, look at the roots when you see chlorosis first, not giving iron injections. Right away. So chlorotic foliage. We know that the stewardia should be dark. Dark, dark green, not pale lime green. Because those kinds of things, this Berkwood was uh, viburnum that I showed you a little bit earlier, it also was chlorotic. And if you're getting suckers from the trunk. Suckers right? from the trunk. See them? There they are. That's a ginkgo. Ginkgos shouldn't sucker. Ginkgos do not sucker. And naturally. quite often, the, the suck suckers come right above where there's a girdle. See that root going around the trunk? And right above it, the suckers? I feel like I was cheated. I was taught in school that crab apples and other fruit trees just sucker. They just do, that's all. Except the more of them I dig up, the more that I see, get them dug down to the right level because then they won't sucker like that. There's a ginkgo. Big Straight ginkgo, in the ground. Suckering from the trunk and the base. And if you look at the top, you'll see that the side branches are taken over. And the top is stopping, that tree needs to be saved. That tree was just planted a year and a half ago. Save that tree. Here's our own crab apple. We moved into this house and the soil was up at the level of the wart you see on the trunk. And I said, this is going straight into the ground. So I dug it down to the actual flare. Now you can see the flare. This tree was a forest of suckers, including that right there was a sucker. And now we've got maybe one sucker comes. That's all and I take it off. Sudden death, when it's 10 or 20 years old and all of a sudden it dies, don't let somebody tell you that it was needle cast or it was, tell them, show me the stump. Show me the roots. It happens with dwarf conifers. Uh, 20 year old. 20 year old, uh, pride right in the front. It looked great in 2010 and 2012. You say, uh-oh. Oh, and that was on the 22nd of May in 2012. And that was the 25th of May. Boom. It was gone. So, so he said, can you look at, take a look at this for me? And I did. We dug it up. And, and one boom. really good root heading over toward the bird bath. I spun it, spun it around as I picked it up. But that, if you look at the bottom, you can see the circle right there where your hand is, Steve, of one root going around. And when you wash it off, you see that that main root went right around the trunk. And, and that's that four-inch pot that that little dwarf conifer was in. It happens with big 20 years in the ground. We thought this was a beautiful, we knew this was a beautiful tree. The library yeah. director said, Janet, look at my tree. And the top, in the year before this, the top had died back and was brown. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I don't think you're going to be able to save this tree. This was the next year. Now it's brown dead almost all the way to the bottom. So at this point, when everybody could believe that this 20-year fir was going to go, I took branches off of the bottom so that I could show you the bottom. It should look like this. It should have a flare at the bottom. That's another con color fir. And I said, okay, I'm not seeing a flare. But when I dug around it, I went, well, no, wait, it's got good-sized roots here. I knew this was all right. And then I realized that I was seeing bark down there. And then I saw the cage. Can you see it even from here? See the loop? This trunk, which is below ground, ran into the, the cage. cage and that girdled it. So this whole thing was 
at least an entire trowel depth down to where it should have been planted. And that's the cage that's supposed to rot out in a few years. Right. So those are the, those, those roots that look so big on the top, those are adventitious roots. The flare roots are trapped down below in the cage and died. And what this means is that this is a very sad thing, very sad for us to say. The majority, that you don't need to read that, I'm going to show it to you all here. The majority of new trees fail. The yes. majority of them are failing. According to the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, the average lifespan of a tree in a downtown area is less than 10 years. Now, that's for a tree. Now, the urban forestry group said, no, 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 that can't be. So they looked better at it and concluded that, no, 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 estimated lean, mean life expectancy ranges from 19 to 28 years, which is which, considerably longer than the 7 or 13 years. Which is considerably shorter than the 100-year lifespan of most trees. Right, right. Because here we are saying 10 years, 28 years, are either one of those, that's not what we plant a tree for. And especially when you think that for 10 of those 28 years, the tree was dying back as it reached the point where it died all the way. This is not acceptable. So when I say the majority fail, some of them fail right away. The majority fail long before they should fail. And we go by what the U.S. Forestry Service has done. They, they looked in 2012. They, they, that was when they published a report looking at cities around the country. We're losing 4 million trees a year. And of the 20 cities that they looked at in the study, 17 showed significant losses of canopy cover. In other words, we're planting trees and we're not getting the cover because those trees are not growing to their potential. They're not filling in the before plants, the trees were taken out. The plants we're putting back in aren't, aren't truly replacing the lost canopy. Yeah. And this is in 2014 when we started taking notes. We said, okay, we got to figure this out. In this particular um, garden, we planted 56 shrubs and trees. 41 of them required major root ball reconfiguration, like we're going to show you. That's an 80% of the plants were in bad shape. And we work in Michigan, Ohio, Massachusetts, Oregon, California. Oh, I forgot to put Oregon in here, Steve. And, and, and no matter where we buy the plants from, because they're all coming from big production nurseries following these procedures that we showed you earlier, all of the plants are coming out this way. In 2017, it was up to 93%, 122 trees and shrubs on this property, and 113 of them required major modification. It, they grew beautifully. Yeah, and they are still growing. But they took us time to do it. So we need questions now about um, roots and planting and, um, and uh, the symptoms that you're seeing. Anybody? Whoa. Okay. okay, you told me that black gum tree on the a J root couldn't be taken out. Um, I'm sorry, I might need more than that. Any tree can be taken out if it's not doing, if it's not growing well, but I'm not sure that I can follow. So Michelle, we'll probably have to talk about that later. Maybe we'll put that one on the forum where we can put some uh, illustrations with it. Please elaborate on root pruning. I can't elaborate on root pruning any more than to tell you that sometimes you have to cut roots out. We'll show you where as we're potting and planting um, some cutting of roots, but root, Pruning is something that we need to learn more about and some extension uh, directors and, and educators are looking into, but it's not something that's funded very heavily because it's not something that benefits the big growers who are providing most of the funds in that kind of research. Does that sound? We don't know what the whole root system looks like and without knowing what the whole system looks system looks like, we can't tell how much we're pruning out. There is a study, and we'll look at that a little bit later on, um, where they're, they're cutting buttress roots one at a time to see how much that affects the stability of the tree, and that's ongoing. Uh, seems hard to tell adventitious flare from flare, especially in a big snarl. Any tips? Chances are the lower roots that you find are going to be, the adventitious are almost always, almost always, always above. above. But the flare roots are, they're, they're going to be down at level A and below. They're all going to be evenly thickening at the base, not staying uniformly the same diameter going out as they go away from the tree. And they may be going away from the tree and then curling around. But if they're not getting thicker right at the base, right where they join the trunk, it's probably not a flare root. Um, 
I said that we have a hand up from Susan T. Do we have a hand up? That's our Sonia asking about a hand up. Um, I'm getting from all the pictures that we have to stop the girdling. I'd like to see pictures of how you cut off the girdling roots. We have, we have posted pictures on our website of, of girdling roots and cutting the roots. We'll show you what we can uh, as we're planting here. We'll be posting more. It's difficult to do that without showing you video, without showing you moving pictures. And we have great problems showing you moving pictures on the webinar. the webinar. They're very jerky and hard to, to work at. But unless you can see it happening, it's very difficult to do. But bear with us as we go through the rest. We might see enough of how we're cutting out those roots as you're looking at, at uh, us in the rest of the webinar today. Best time of year to dig up trees and to root prune and dig. Well, root pruning, if you're root pruning to, to transplant, you, you do it in the spring and then or in the, the fall, fall, the cool and, seasons. And if you're doing it to lift it and repair it or try to get to the problem anytime. We've done it anytime. We have lifted trees in full, um, just as they're budding out. We've lifted them when they're fully dormant. I, and it's I moved in, I, we moved an eight foot weeping Japanese maple in August in yeah. 90 degrees. And actually August, late August is a good time. Root growth starts happening at the end of the summer. Um, so the, we, there's not a lot of study that shows here's the best time to dig this tree up and do anything to it. Um, but it's just like anything else in the garden. The best time may not be when you can do it. Do it when you can do it. Do they sell bare root evergreens? Yeah, yes. I was going to jump in actually and say there's a lot of questions about selling bare root um, and whether we could get lists in Michigan. So just general bare root buying uh, um, tips would be would be helpful. Um, it's been it's been hard for us to find people who sell bare roots other than liners out. They're, they're going to be small, most of them, when you buy very bare root. Small. And, and the bigger bare root trees, for instance, coming out of Bailey Nurseries in Wisconsin are being sold wholesale where you're buying a whole truck. So if you want a bigger bare root tree, you need to uh, join in with someone else. The Soil Conservation District may be selling you trees. Um, uh, uh, Global Relief and Michigan Relief may be selling bare root trees that are six feet tall because they bought in bulk from one of the bigger nurseries. Otherwise, the bare root trees that we're finding are small trees, and we'll do what we can to publish a, uh, a list, and we'll put that into our newsletter if that will help people. But we're having our own trouble finding them because it's not, it is not the most cost-effective way to produce a tree. The and cost ship. Of, yep, the cost-effective way is to stick those guys in containers and cause these problems. So we buy small, and we unpot them like we showed you with the beach. And they grow faster. We wrote an article uh, in Michigan Gardener and we've posted it on our website as well. If you take a, a little tree that's one inch, tr a trunk that's one inch in diameter versus the same species of tree and the same type of tree that's a four inch trunk and you plant the two of them in the same conditions, in five years, the one inch trunk will be bigger than the four inch trunk and it will continue growing faster than the four inch trunk. Yep. So smaller is better. And so if that's where you find your bare roots, do that. Try going on to Google. That's what we've been doing to try to amass a list of places to buy them. Go to Google and put buy ginkgo bare root and see what you find because they're there. There's a question. Do uh, have a list of garden centers. Garden centers do not carry bare root. I have never. There are some garden centers in Ontario. We visited the garden center. In Michigan, centers. the question was. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think Cold Stream Nursery. Some might. Check yes, Cold I Stream Nursery in Michigan. They're, they're around, but, um, but they're not the big garden centers. Do magnolias sucker? Or could it be a planting issue? Magnolias, some magnolias, like the uh, um, Sweet Bay Magnolia, is a suckering shrub as much as a tree, and it will sucker. Um, but if you're getting suckers off the trunk of a magnolia, you probably have a root problem or a depth problem. Can I just promote Susan's question that I think she has her hand up about, can I apply these, sa these same principles to a container shrub and should I root prune every so often? Um, the same principles on a container, the same principles that we're showing you with trees apply to all of the shrubs. Um, and should you root prune on a, uh, occasionally on something, once it's in the ground, it should be able to take off and grow roots like the systems we showed you at the beginning of the webinar by itself. But if you're growing it in a container on your deck, yes. Ah, yes. If you're going to grow it in a container on a deck, then occasionally you should take it out, cut off the circle that's reached the bottom, put some new soil in the bottom, not cover the, the trunk, but put some new soil in the bottom, set it back in uh, with some slices on the side. Yes, you do root prune. That's a, that's a bonsai technique. Um, 
keeping the plant small that way. I'm I'll we're answer. going to have to check these questions. Yeah, we'll, there's a lot. We, and, we didn't we, finish the, uh, the chat transcript from our last webinar yet, and that's because we ran into some technical difficulties with posting the web. But we're getting better. And thanks to your um, subscriptions, we hoped this would happen. We are getting a new computer that will let us not have so much technical difficulties with editing the videos. So we'll get this transcript back out to you. So if your question was missed, we'll get it back to you. My landscaper thought I was nuts, but my husband humored me and we dug around each tree and removed part of the cage, rope, and burlap 10 years ago after the landscaper planted. Now I wish we'd also raised them up and looked for the flare. Yep, but you still can excavate around them and, uh, and, and get the, keep the, the, the trunk from rotting as it might happen over time. So you can let them sit in the well even 10 years down the way. We, we believe if you ask a landscaper to take the ball and uh, the to unwrap the ball and burlap that they should some some will refuse well do you remember when we were planting at um at bob's house across the street from vince's and we had we had the landscapers helping us we had contractors helping us planting a lot of trees i went out it was a very hot day i went out to get something to drink being nice to people and i came back and they planted that next tree really quickly i thought wow yeah. I said, but they did, you, did it their way they didn't take the cage off they thought i wasn't going to see um, and we've heard from people, one woman in particular that we've worked with for a while, who lost a beautiful tricolor beech after 15 years to root girdling and bought a new one. She said, can I, I said, yeah, she can plant the same thing. It didn't die from a disease. And I told her, make sure that they plant it properly. She still let them talk her into not bothering the roots of the tree. And I said, well, if so maybe you'll get 15 years again. Once maybe bitten, 15 years twice enough. shy, want to go for three times. Yeah. They can be yeah. quite the bullies. We tell people the only guarantee the plant has is you, not what the nursery says. If I have to let something grow for a year and decide whether it's too pitiful for me to grow, I've just lost a year. If I do everything I can to make it grow properly, and if I happen to, if it doesn't make it, well, okay. You could set a ball and burlap plant outside in the, and it might survive a year by itself without you doing anything almost. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll live their warranty period. Okay, we're going to move on. We'll catch up with the chat a little bit later because now we move into chapter four, a planting, which is maybe the most important thing. thing. So if you'd like to continue with this series, go to Plant It Well, chapter four, Planting When the Roots Are Wrong. Thank you for coming along. Enjoy the show.